I want to talk about mortises today. Basically a hole in a piece of wood usually combined with the tenon that fits into that hole. Uh, it's one of those fundamental joints that you're going to be faced with cutting a lot uh, in the furniture projects that you take on in the future. So it's good to have a good way to go about doing it. I want to talk about two specific ways out of all the ways we can do it. The first is one that I've utilized probably for the first 20 years of my woodworking career, which involves a drill press and a chisel. You drill a hole and then you take those holes and you chop them into a square mortise. Pretty simple. The second technique I want to show is one that I've used for probably the last 10 years of my career, and I like it a lot. That's a hollow chisel mortiser. Essentially, it's doing exactly the same thing. It's a machine that drills a hole with a round bit, and surrounding that bit is a hollow square chisel, which is squaring up that hole as we go. Same concept, different way to go about doing it. Um, drilling and chopping. Uh, it's very reliable, very accurate, mortiser, uh, much quicker, much more expensive. So the really important difference between these two methods is that drilling and chopping is essentially a power assisted handwork technique. And the importance in doing handwork is getting your layout exactly where you want it. If there's a line that you're chopping or sawing to, it's not in the right place, uh, you're going to be out of luck. Uh, so. The first thing I want to do when I come to a drill press is make sure all my marks and layouts are exactly where I want them. Much less important when we get to the mortiser. Uh, however, I do want to head to the bench, get the marks down, show you how I go about laying out a mortise, and then we'll head back here, drill it out, and chop it square. When I'm laying out a mortise for drilling and chopping, I need to define all of it. I need to define the ends where I'm going to start and stop. I need to define the walls, the width of the mortise. Um, and I also want to add a center line on there to help me center the stock when I'm drilling it out. Uh, speaking of drilling, I always like to set the width of my mortise slightly wider than the diameter of the drill bit that I'm using, just in case I'm slightly off center, I'm not gonna shoot past my scribe line. So say for a 3 8 inch wide mortise, I'm gonna go just a hair outside of that and hopefully stay within those confines when we drill. Uh, one important thing here is even though I'm just laying out one piece, if I have multiple pieces, I'm always going to gang those up and scribe all of them at once whenever I can to keep all of my measurements as consistent as possible. So I have my mortise ends scribed. I've got a center line as close to centered on the stock as I can get it. And I have my outer walls scribed at slightly wider than the bit I'm using. Uh, in this case, it is about a 16th of an inch over my intended bit. That gives me about a 30 second clearance on either side uh, in case I miss a little bit. So I'm in good shape here. While I'm at it, let me go ahead and talk about laying out to cut a hollow chisel mortise. In that case, the layout goes quite a bit quicker. Uh, all I really need to do is identify where the mortise is going to stop and start. I'll put a scribe line there. I always like to use a knife line or a scribe line uh, if I'm going to follow up with the chisel so that the tool can find that line uh, much easier than a pencil line. So I've got uh, end lines scribed on the stock, and that's really all I need to do. 
because the mortiser is going to take care of the width of the mortise because of the bit and it's going to take care of the position because of the position between the fence and the bit itself. So um, big difference between machine work and hand work it has to do with that amount of layout that we've got to get going. Okay. I've got the layout done and I went ahead and darkened that with the pencil so we can see what's going on here. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is to set the depth of the drill bit. And so I'll make a mark on the end just a little bit deeper than the intended length of the tenon. That means I don't have to clean things out really, really well or stress out about that tenon bottoming out before the shoulders hit. Next thing I want to do is align the bit to that center line that I scribed in place. Uh, a really easy way to do that is get a fence roughly in place, clamp one end to the bench, and then you can pivot that and dial in that centering of the bit really accurately and really precisely. Uh, there's no need for anything to be square to anything since it's a round bit cutting a round hole. We just need it cutting where we want it to cut along that scribe line. Clamp that down and then we're ready to go. Uh, on this first cut, I'll double check my centering with a shallow cut. And I can see here that it is centered between my lines. You can also see how that bit diameter is slightly smaller than the spacing of my scribe line. So back when I said I just want to set that uh, mortise width slightly wider than my drill press, it's for this reason, because I'm not always going to drill exactly in line and I don't want to overshoot those outside lines. So I'm going to go ahead and start on one end and then just work my way down the mortise. I'd like those holes to be as close as possible. You really want to make sure if you're using a brad point bit like this that you're not overlapping those holes too much because that bit can wander and kind of make a mess of things. So I'm trying to get pretty accurately aligned holes end to end and I'm checking to make sure that I'm staying centered between my scribe lines. As I work my way down to the opposite end, um, I really like to get a hole pretty adjacent to that end line. So I'll go ahead and skip over and then come back and drill a hole to kind of even things out uh, if I need to do that. So with the majority of the waste gone, we could head back to the bench and make really quick work of squaring this up. So we've got four walls of the mortise to square up, the two ends and the two long walls. I always like to start at the ends because severing that, that uh, short grain is harder work than doing the long grain. Uh, the drilled out waste really helps us out quite a bit. And I can see that not only is the mortise slightly wider than the diameter of my drill bit, it's also slightly wider than the width of my chisel as well. I like that. It keeps the chisel from getting wedged into a mortise that is exactly the same size. When I'm chopping, I like to start at the widest diameter of the hole so that as I'm clearing the waste, I'm removing as little material as possible. Then working side to side, I'm just sneaking my way back to the baseline, taking cuts maybe about a 32nd of an inch thick. And my final cut is going to be just a sliver of waste that I need to remove. So I'll find that knife line with my chisel and this isn't tremendously critical. If this were a through mortise and that mortise was visible on the outside face, then that would be really important. Here, uh, hitting that line is important in terms of relative location of those cross parts throughout all the pieces. And you can use a square to make sure that your chisel is nice and vertical. Or in my case, I actually undercut it a little bit because the last thing I want is to 
have that end ramp out a little bit and keep that tenon from fully seating. As I'm working along the long wall, so I want to use a wider chisel. And again, rather than starting right at that scribe line, I'm going to start toward the center, remove that waste as I'm working my way back to those outer walls. What I find is I can use those remaining scallops from the drill bit to help guide my chisel work. It tells me how much more I have to go. It also tells me in terms of the width of those scallops top to bottom, whether or not I'm chiseling straight or not. If you saw that as I was chiseling, I actually opened up just a little bit of a split on the end of that mortise. Uh, not the greatest thing in the world. That's why I try to keep it about a half inch in from the ends. That said, I'm not going to throw away this workpiece just yet, especially if I have three more to match. I'm going to be a little bit careful uh, as I continue cutting and fitting to make sure that the tenon doesn't open that up too much. And I figure once I get glue on everything, uh, it's not going to be a big deal. And so even though the bottom of the mortise is still a little bit rough, I can tell with my combination square that it's still plenty deep to make sure that tenon isn't going to bottom out before the shoulder seat. So accurate layout, some quick drilling, careful chopping. We have a really nice mortise. Let me go ahead and show you uh, what we can be doing at the hollow chisel mortiser. What's the same, what's a little bit different and how it speeds things up a little bit. When you're installing a hollow chisel mortise bit, uh, there's a few things you want to get right. Uh, the first thing I want to do is insert the bit into the chisel, bring that up into the machine. I want to position the chisel just a hair below its final resting place. Temporarily clamp that in place. Doesn't have to be square right now. Uh, then I'll bring the bit up. I use a piece of scrap to protect my fingers. I'll bring that up tight to the bottom of the chisel and then I can tighten that in place with the chuck. Once that's in place, then I can loosen up the chisel, slide it up to its final resting position, which gives me the clearance that I want, and then use the square against the fence to square it up at the same time as I lock that in place. The next step is determining the position of the mortise on the workpiece. And while we spend a lot of time getting an accurate center line for drilling, we don't need to do that here. I just need to get some marks on there roughly close to center. I'll position the chisel to where I think it's centered. What's really cool about the floor standing hollow chisel mortiser is it has a table that moves front to back and side to side. It allows you to really control the positioning of the bit. So I'll get it roughly centered, clamp it in place. I'll make a cut. 
and then I'll rotate the stock around and make an adjacent cut. And any offset between those two mortises tells me how far off I am up center. So I'll kind of split the difference of that offset, make another pair of cuts and try it again. When it comes to cutting a mortise, same thing. I like to have a depth line on the end of the stock and I set the bit just slightly below that. Work my way all the way down the mortise and before I get to the far end, I like to skip some stock and make a cut right at my scribe line on the opposite side to make sure that's nice and vertical. Then I can come back and clean up the waste. And one thing I like to do is once I've gone the whole length of the mortise is I'll come back taking cuts as I go. It feels like I'm not removing any more stock, but I find that taking a second pass on the mortise uh, gives me a more consistent mortise. So when I go to cut my tenons later, I find the fit is going to be more consistent super quick way to cut a mortise if you want to make this investment. In the past, it's always been easier to cut a tenon faster than a mortise. I found that when I moved to a hollow chisel mortiser, it was the first time where I could cut a mortise more quickly than a tenon, and it represented a fundamental shift in my processes and my approach to woodworking. I think it's a great investment. Uh, you want to make that plunge. I also find that drilling and chomping is a perfect way to cut a mortise. And again, it's something that I did for many, many years to great effect and without too much frustration. Either way you go, you're going to have a lot of success in cutting your mortises and making your woodworking life a little bit easier.